Aha, gotcha. Well, hello. If you saw my last video, you will know that I moved. I moved from what is called the East Bay of the San Francisco Bay Area to the North Bay. So it's not just food and cooking that I approach with a budget. It's really life in general, <laughs> which is why instead of paying like 2000 plus dollars a month for rent, I decided to buy a trailer and pay a fraction of the price in rent. So Andre and I are working towards something called the FIRE movement, which stands for Financial Independence Retire Early. We love working, but we do want to have the opportunity to work the way we want to and be on top of our money and not have money be on top of us. So really the same approach I apply to food and cooking, I apply to everything. And if you all are interested in that type of stuff, please let me know in the comments down below so I can make some videos about that. Right now, I'm just taking these propane tanks so I can go get them filled. Ugh. Oh my God. Time to go to the hardware store. So difficult. Go on where you belong. You always gotta follow the process step by step. For today, I'm gonna go help my friend in her garden, but I'll pick you guys back up tomorrow and we will make something delicious. I got bees following me. It's like a cult leader for all of nature's creatures. Well, it's terrible lighting, but I just filled up and turned the bed, <laughs> hair in my mouth, <laughs> the bed that will be the artichoke bed. So maybe we can do like a before and after at the end of the summer and you can see all the beautiful artichokes that end up growing here. Ooh. It looks like it's gearing up to be a very nice day. 
So I'm gonna step back here and show you the salad that I'm making. I love salad. Start with a bed of fresh greens. I'm using baby spinach and baby kale. You can use whatever you have available in your area. I love cabbage in my salad because it's crunchy and tangy, and it's also cheap and keeps really well in the refrigerator. Store it whole, unwashed, and wrapped in plastic, and it could last over a month. Baby bell peppers are widely available where I live. They are crisp and sweet and add some nice color to the salad. I think salads are like a collage of fresh ingredients that you eat. I want my salads to be crisp, colorful, tangy, and satisfying. Finding different textures and flavors that pair well together is part of that process. Making thin slices is also a good strategy, but I definitely need to sharpen this knife. Voila, lovely. Fruit can be a fun addition to a salad. Who needs corn syrup or sugar in their salad dressing when you've got pears, apples, berries, or citrus that you can add to your salad instead? I'm trying to make this pretty for YouTube, but normally I would just dice my pear. Seeds are nutritious and add fiber and protein to your salad, making it more filling. These are pepitas, a tender variety of pumpkin seed. I splurged and bought myself a piece of smoked salmon. Broken into small pieces, I'll be able to enjoy this portion of fish all week long. Salt and pepper, olive oil and balsamic vinegar, of course, fresh lemon juice. A hard boiled egg will make this salad even more satisfying. So I also made a couple containers like this to take to work with me. That's very easy. I found that taking food to work, not only does it save so much money, it's so much healthier, and it just makes me happier knowing that I have food for myself and I don't have to stress about like where I'm gonna eat or what I'm gonna eat. I already know what I'm gonna eat. It's gonna be a delicious, healthy salad. I tried to make this extra pretty. <laughs> But normally I don't make salads with giant slices of pear like this because it's not easy to put in your mouth. How do you... That's weird. Mmm, that's delicious though. I don't always buy smoked salmon like this. I haven't actually in a while, but I decided that I wanted to start eating more anti-inflammatory foods. Like I wanted to do something for my body but I've never been good at like fad diets. <laughs> I've always been like really resistant to them, um, like keto or Atkins back in the day, even like low fat and low carb. And, um, but I wanted something to like orient myself. And I do feel like there's ways that I can notice inflammation in my body. Um, sometimes in my skin, like I'm getting some rosacea and sometimes in my digestive system. So I decided, eating more anti-inflammatory foods would be good. And it just so happens that anti-inflammatory foods are also delicious. So probably my next few videos, I'll be making a lot of anti-inflammatory meals. So salmon, I went on that tangent because salmon and fish are very, very good anti-inflammatory foods because of those omega-3 fatty acids. Smoked salmon is pricey, but I love it. And if you just use a little bit, you can make a $6 piece of smoked salmon go a long ways. There's no graceful way to eat salad. So you could be all worried about it and self-conscious about it, or you could just be like, screw it, I'm gonna eat this salad. It's delicious and I'm a human and I need to eat things like salad.
I'm not from California, and I've wrestled with living here. It's an incredible place that also has incredible challenges. It's nice to take a day and not worry about the problems and just enjoy. After all, the seals aren't worried, so why should I worry? Very sunny. Yep, tastes like licorice. It's fennel. So far, I've been having a fun time living in the North Bay. And today, I was just walking around and noticed that there's like all these edible plants around here. This is fennel and it's just like growing all over this embankment right here. And yeah, it's just giving me the idea of maybe doing a video about foraging for food and seeing what kind of fun free ingredients we can find around here. Maybe, I mean, can you make sprouts out of fennel seeds? I've been making sprouts lately, but I kind of, they don't look that sprouty. Are you sprouty fennel seeds? Delicious. There's also a ton of wild blackberry around here. This is all blackberry. These are gonna be great and probably in a few months. These things grow like weeds around here, like wild invasive weeds. Gotta watch out, there's also a lot of poison oak. Look at that, all poison oak right here. All freaking poison oak. Oh my gosh. So much of it. Spanish word of the day, yerba buena, lemon balm. Yerba buena, yerba buena. Tastes like, actually maybe it's not lemon balm. What is that? Okay, I think I've done enough eating of random plants for one video. I know my vlog style video has been a bit different and I hope you've enjoyed it, even though it's not my usual recipe heavy video. I've obviously been in the middle of a transition, so it's a good time to reevaluate things and like come up with some new ideas. So I do hope you let me know in the comments down below what you thought of this vlogish type video. Are you interested in videos about fire, financial independence, retire early, slash what I'm doing with my RV. And would it be cool to do a foraging video where I go out and try to find <laughs> wild plants that are not poisonous? Usually the ones that look good aren't poisonous and you can just use some common sense, but sometimes there are poisonous plants that look yummy and they'll like really, really kill you. I actually ate some hemlock without realizing it was poisonous, but I didn't get sick, fortunately. But still, don't do what I do and know what you're doing when you're foraging for wild plants. I think that's enough for today. My next video, I've got some tasty anti-inflammatory recipes to share with you, including the split pea soup I'm about to eat for lunch. And before you ask, because I know you're going to ask, at least I hope you're going to ask, don't worry, the rabbits are still here. Roll the rabbits. Oh, and happy cooking. <laughs>